anytime we're talking about Ferrari, James, yeah. you start off anti-Ferrari, yeah. and then by the end, you're fully on And pitting. the evil starts coming out of me. Literally every time we do that. I pretend to be good, but I am a heel. Ferrari has a reputation for three things, making expensive cars, racing expensive cars, and suing the crap out of people. A lot of folks don't like Ferrari for this reason, but are they really in the wrong? Today we're gonna take a look at some of the prancing horses' most egregious legal battles and decide for ourselves. And at the end, we're gonna see if we can get Ferrari to send us a cease and desist of our very own because apparently, Max thinks it's a great idea to try and get us sued. You didn't tell me that. I'm James, he's Nolan, and this is the show where we put random car crap on trial. The d d d d list Big thanks to Cove for sponsoring today's video. Give it to me, Nolan. Uh, I wanna listen to music in the kitchen, too. I wanna listen to music in the shop, Nolan. I'm making ratatouille, Jerry. Come on, give it to me. Oh. Nolan, give it to me, Nolan. Okay, all right, stop, stop. I think I know a way we can sell this. All right, Nolan, on the count of three, we drive. Then we'll have two Bluetooth speakers. One, two, three. Whoa, stop, Donut Boys. If you break that speaker, you'll have no music at all. But there's gotta be a solution. There is. Introducing the Cove split speaker. Whoa, comes in a concrete color. Not only does it come in different colors, but the high performance split speaker features quick connect via Bluetooth 5.0. That's cool, but it's still only one speaker. Sure, it's got 360 surround sound right now, but when you do this, you've now got a perfect left and right stereo sound. I can listen in the kitchen while you cook. And I can listen in the garage while you're in. And with a 30 foot range, you boys won't miss a beat. To get the perfect gift under $80 this holiday season, visit coveaudio.com slash DM split and get 68% off or more site wide. And now, let's groove on back to the show. Probably the most famous Ferrari dispute ever was over Deadmau 5's Ferrari 458, also known as the Ferrari. On the Gumball 3000, which is where a bunch of rich guys drive their supercars really fast on public roads. Sounds great. Basically, Dead Mal 5 wrapped his 458 with an ancient meme from like 10 years ago called Nyan Cat. Uh, to go along with the cat theme, he also added rebranded Prancing Cat logos. Hmm. Then, after the Gumball 3000 was over, he listed it for sale on Greg's list. But Ferrari did not like this, not to one bit. Ferrari has a rule book, mm. and anyone who buys one of their cars is required to sign it. And Deadmau5 broke two rules. Number one, no tampering with the Prancing Horse logo. Number two, you can't sell your Ferrari without giving the dealership first dibs. Mm. So Ferrari issued uh, a cease and desist letter and Deadmau5 removed the wrap and took down the ad, mm. and then ended up getting a Nyan Cat Lamborghini machine instead. So Nolan, how do you feel about this? Do you think Ferrari is in the right or in the wrong for suing Dead Mal 5? You know, th this is like a classic case of immovable object, unstoppable force. You know, like Dead Mouse, very famous for being like a troll type figure. Mm -hmm. His personality coming against like Ferrari's infamous legal team, mm -hmm. it, there's just no way that this was gonna be a good situation. I think who gives a crap what you wrap your car in? Well, I mean, they didn't, they didn't care about what the car was wrapped in. It was the, they, it was the logos and yeah. like the floor mats were like a big uh, piece as well because he had them restitched. Yeah, that's infringing on their intellectual property. But I mean, that's kind of the thing here is like, you let one person get away with it, that gives the, ne the next person legal precedent. Right. And then it just, yeah. then they lose you their copyright. You actually have to sue people. If you copyright something, if someone recreates it mm -hmm. and you don't sue them, like you said, it's legal precedent for someone else to do it. So you are required by law to sue them. So, Ferrari, I hate to say it, was in the right. Um, and Dead Mal 5, I don't get it. I don't get you. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand you. <laughs> so, Nolan, this next example doesn't involve tampering with a car at all. What? Okay, but it still managed to get Ferrari's Italian trousies all <laughs> twisted up like a bunch of licorice. <laughs> right, a German fashion designer named Philippe 
Plein uh, posted yeah. a picture of his shoes next to a Ferrari 812 Superfast. The shoes are green, the car is green. I guess he thought it would be a cute picture, mm. okay? But, you know who didn't think it was cute? Mm -hmm. Ferrari. Oh. So <laughs> according to Ferrari, uh, Philip was using their trademark to promote his own brand. They said the Instagram post tarnishes the reputation of Ferrari's brand and causes Ferrari further material damage. Ferrari sent Philippe a cease and desist letter, but he did not cease, nor did he desist. He went to Italian court against Ferrari, where he lost. <laughs> he now owes Ferrari over $350,000 in compensation and isn't allowed to ever post another image of a Ferrari ever again. Look at any of our videos, listen to any of our podcasts. I am not one to defend Ferrari, no. okay? But I think in this particular instance, because he was selling his product mm -hmm. and he put it next to the logo, that's like if a brand posted like their product with a picture of you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and used it for like monetary gain, you wouldn't be that happy about that, no, right? No, I think this is also a case just to counter your stance a little bit, James. The Ferrari mindset or philosophy of like choosing their customers and like making sure that their brand is associated with the right people, this is where it also comes into play because Philip Lyons brand is kind of opposed to Ferrari's brand. I'm gonna go 50-50 on this one. Sure, they're protecting trademark, kind of, and protecting that, uh, that I think he was implying a collaboration. I'm going full Ferrari. I'm gonna give them extra credit. Okay, yeah, you owe us money, but also you're not allowed to post a picture yeah, that's, that's of a Ferrari fun. ever I think that's again. too far. No, yeah. that's sick. <laughs> that is sick. That is spiteful and that is dope. And I love stuff like that. I love it. Anytime we talk about Ferrari, James, yeah. you start off anti-Ferrari, yeah. and then by the end, you're fully on <laughs> And the evil starts coming out of me. Literally every time we do this. I pretend to be good, but I am a heel. Uh, I like evil shit, man. I think it's cool. It's one thing to sue DJs and fashion designers, but Ferrari also recently sued a nonprofit charity called the Purasang Foundation. Purasang translates to thoroughbred, which okay. is a fancy horse. Mm -hmm. And Ferrari really, really, really wanted to use that name for their new crossover SUV. So they're an anti-doping organization that keeps runners from using performance enhancing drugs. Okay. But because this charity trademarked the name, Ferrari couldn't use it. So they did the completely normal thing that anyone would do and they sued the charity that already had the name. Let's hear from our legal expert how they did that. <laughs> hey, it's Joe the Legal Beagle here. Woof woof. <laughs> Look, I'm not an attorney, okay? Not even a little bit. In the case of Ferrari versus Pearl Sangue Foundation, the charity trademarked the name in 2013 and blocked Ferrari from using it for the new SUV. But even though the charity was active, Ferrari claimed it did not make sufficient commercial use of the name within a five year period and therefore was not entitled to exclusive use of the name. I got a cousin named Pero Sangue on the other side. Other side of what? You're asking too many questions, okay? <laughs> As of right now, it's not immediately clear if Ferrari's gonna use the name or not, but I've seen some pictures of this SUV and boy, oh my God, it's great. But one thing's for certain, why are you fighting over such a dumb name? Back to you, gentlemen. Lawsuits have been described to me as like, you both stick a, like a double-edged sword into each other, mm -hmm. and then you walk towards each other until <laughs> someone says give. Yeah, yeah. And Ferrari has a way longer sword than pretty much anybody, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of a dick move and I gotta go with Parasang. Parasang is just not a good name for a car. Or a anti-doping company. The five-year trademark law I mentioned goes both ways. The same law was used against Ferrari in the trademark battle for the Ferrari 250 oh, GTO. Interesting. A company called Ares Design wanted to sell modernized replicas of the 250. But if you learned anything about Ferrari in the last few minutes, you could probably guess that they did not like this. I mean, what could go wrong trying to sell Ferrari's most famous car? Ferrari went to court and declared that the 250 was a work of art, giving it the same replica protection rights as the Mona Lisa. In other words, Ferrari would be the only ones with the rights to distribute copies of the car, just like the Da Vinci's are the only ones who are allowed to say, yeah, you can make a calendar with the Mona Lisa on it. But these Aries design guys, they were like, dude, 
Ferrari, you haven't done anything with the shape of this car in way over five years. So they flipped it. Yeah, they flipped it and reversed it. Wow. And Aries Design won the lawsuit. Whoa. And now they have the rights to sell their extremely expensive coach built 250 replicas and Ferrari can't do a damn thing about it. This more than any of the other ones. I'm surprised that they were able to do that. Like every other year, one of them goes for like $30 million. Like mm -hmm. the most expensive car to ever sell at auction is a Ferrari 250 GT. So that just makes it extremely like surprising. That that some court was just like, yeah, you can go ahead and make mm -hmm. them. I mean, this is like essentially like fake Jordans. Like that's sure. not legal. Yeah, yeah. I'm really surprised that these Aries guys got away with this. I think Ferrari did the right thing to protect their legacy and all that. How are they not gonna? Yeah, they, yeah, they can't let, they you know. can't. They had, did what they had to do. This wasn't the only time Ferrari lost a legal battle over a replica. Back in 2008, the Italian Customs Administration found a near-perfect clone of the 1958 Dino in the port of Genoa. The counterfeit car looked so real that they kept it and displayed it at the Museo della Counterfezione Museum. It's the counterfeit museum. That's sick. Uh, and they used it for training to help agents identify Ferrari and other knockoff supercars. Now, when Ferrari heard about the clone, they sued the Italian Customs Administration for keeping it. But the judge ruled in favor of the Italian Customs because of a law that said confiscated goods can be used by armed forces for forensic purposes. Yeah, I, I gotta go against Ferrari on this one. This is stupid to sue over that. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. Thank you, welcome back. This next case involves easily the coolest car on this list, at least in my opinion, the Ferrari F40 LM. Now the LM was the lightweight performance version of the bourgeois <laughs> F40. A Belgian billionaire named Jean Bleton happened to own one, and he wanted to give it a few custom touches. Uh oh. All right. Uh oh. And by custom touches, I mean he cut the roof off, added a roll cage, replaced the suspension with coilovers, rerouted the exhaust, and removed the restrictor plates to let all 760. Hearst purrs run free. And guess what Ferrari thought about this hot dog up drop tap? I bet they loved it, James. Well, you'd be wrong. Uh -oh. They ordered Jean Bleton to remove all prancing horse badges from his yellow abomination and then refused to acknowledge the car's existence, blacklisting it from the history books. I've never seen this child. And it said that until this day, the yellow bastard Ferrari can still be seen ripping up the track during official Ferrari track days without any logos. This is just stupid. I don't care how special the car is, he bought it. Yeah, it's his. You know, it's not like he bought a license to drive the car, he bought the car, right? Yeah. So, this is dumb. Yeah, I gotta agree, like, I think this guy did a terrible job modifying this car, I think it looks awful, uh, but he did buy it, yeah. so it's his. Ferrari doesn't just blacklist cars, though. They also blacklist people, even celebrity people. Whoa. Which are the best people. Here's a few people on Ferrari's naughty list who apparently aren't allowed to buy any Ferraris ever again. Wow. Tyga didn't make payments on his 458 Spider. You're out of here. Justin Bieber forgot where he parked his 458 Italia. It's understandable. Out of here. Kimberly Kardashian received a Ferrari as a gift from someone known for committing fraud. Sorry, Kimberly, you're out of here. Floyd Mayweather didn't wait long enough before selling his mm, Ferrari. You gotta read that fine print, dude. Sorry, Floyd, you're out of here. Black China painted her Ferrari Barbie pink, which violates Ferrari's rule of not painting their cars any shade of pink. Yeah. Look. Companies are allowed to have the right to refuse service to anybody, right? Just like a McDonald's. Just like uh, Ferrari's just like fancy dying McDonald's, but I'm not talking about all of night. I get it. I, I, I think I think so, some of the reasons are dumb though. Some of the reasons are dumb, and I like to picture that the, like there's a part of their legal department that is just like, all right guys, I got an idea. Yeah. Okay, Justin Bieber forgot where he parked his car. How long was it for? Like two and a half hours. Let's get his ass. Dude, let's blacklist him. That'd be hilarious, dude. Yeah, that is pretty That guy funny. thinks he's so cool. <laughs> but if we give them the benefit of the doubt, 
<laughs> and just assume that they're hilarious. That they're having fun. <laughs> yeah, they're over there just like, dude, another one, dude? Yeah! That being said, yeah, they're in the right, Scoop. Yeah. yeah. There's one last thing that we have to do now, Nolan. Ooh. What you have before you, right here, is a Ferrari badge. Okay. We're gonna go stick it on my race car Jetta. Oh boy. Why? Because receiving a cease and desist from Ferrari is almost like a badge of honor for huge celebrities like me. And I think <laughs> that it would be really funny to hang that on the wall so it's the first thing you see when you come into Donut. This is a uh, pretty well done, I would say. Yeah, man. Emblem. SF stands for San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Where they make Ferrari, San Francisco, Italy. Amazon. Got these on Amazon for 15 bucks. That's Which last time I checked is way cheaper than a Ferrari. Uh, but if we put these on the race car Jetta, I don't think anyone will be able to tell the difference. So shall we, Nolan? Let's do it. So we're outside of the Inglewood Propulsion Laboratory in front of my race car Jetta, Nolan. Let's commit a crime. All right, love crimes. There it is, there's your badge there. Let's get sued, Nolan. All right. Let me put them right here. Okay, ready? Spider horse. Can you imagine walking through the woods and seeing a freaking spider horse, a venomous horse with eight legs? I'm scared of horses with four legs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, James Hoffman. Today we honor a lost innovation. Let us remember its legacy. Let us remember its rising light. Though no longer with us due to safety regulations, their up and down contributions will live on in our hearts forever. Here with a special performance from Epidemic Sound, please welcome Nolan J. Sims. Show your respect for pop-up headlights by going to DonutMedia.com. It's got a beautiful airbrush design, and honestly, it's hard to put a price on such a legacy, but if I were to guess, I'd say they're available for $29.98, which is, in fact, way less than $30. So go pay your respects at DonutMedia.com. Bless up and down. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching the D-List and everything else on Donut. Hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss anything. Follow Nolan on Instagram and Thank Twitter, you. at Nolan J. Sykes. Follow me, at James Pumphrey. I love you. See you later.